Dr. Daisy, you have your five minutes. Thank you. Just to tie up some loose ends, as to uh, hiddenness, uh, the question is, why should we expect God to provide more evidence than he in fact does? Well, for the simple reason that we would expect a person to ex provide uh, evidence for their existence and uh, notify another of his or her intentions if, if you wanted to strike up a love relationship, right? I mean, love is as love does. How can we say that God wants to have a loving relationship with all of humanity if hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions, billions of people are excluded from this and who aren't given enough evidence. Uh, that's just not what we would expect God to do. Um, as for mind-body uh, dualism and materialism, Craig says that epiphenomenalism is, uh, is uh, unworkable. Well, that's a, a matter for the philosophy of mind and you know, many, many people who work on this problem just disagree. Um, can we have a coherent conception of ourselves uh, thinking that we are our physical brains? Sure. Um, evolution. Now, have I shifted ground in saying uh, that I'll, I'll accept evolution on faith because it's so highly improbable? No, the point was that in, if, if you uh, look at something in light of your total evidence um, and it's improbable, but you can, you can explain why it results anyway, then, you know, it's reasonable to accept it. After all, you know, somebody's got to win the lottery. Um, and we don't, we don't have to accept on faith that, that someone does, and you don't have to abandon your reason to explain why it's got to be somebody, although it doesn't have to be one person over another. Um, as for the argument from suffering, um, could eternal communion in, in uh, heaven with God make up for a child's short life of misery on earth, as was suggested? Well, the victims might be glad to go to heaven, but that alone wouldn't show that God was morally justified in permitting their misery. I mean, if I steal your car and total it and then I give you $100,000, you might be happier with the money, but that wouldn't show that it was morally okay to rob you. Anyway, God could allow these children into heaven without allowing them to die in agony. Now, we're, we have a kind of dispute of dueling experts as to the fine-tuning and, uh, and the, the um, first cause and the, uh, the Big Bang. Um, it's like in the World War II in the race to create the bomb, there were you know, German physicists working on both sides, and the question was whose Germans were going to be better. I guess in, the, we, in this case, we have a question of whose, whose physicists are better. I don't know if we can resolve that right now. Um, I didn't say that Joseph of Arimathea had to have moved Jesus' body, although I don't see why that's ruled out by anything we know. Um, as far as I know, some of the disciples could have. Um, you know, robbers could have. Well, could, could Jews have gone and pointed to the body to disprove the rise of this new uh, sect based on Christ? Well, if it's in a, uh, if it's in a, a uh, common grave, there could easily be con confusion about who's who, and of course, bodies do rot. Do all uh, experts agree that uh, the disciples had visual experiences of Jesus? Well, that would mean that everyone who studies the New Testament is a Christian. I'm sorry, that's just not the case. Um, in my view, the most reasonable position that you've heard tonight, this evening, is that there is no God. Well, maybe slightly less reasonable than that, but not as reasonable as the view that there's a Christian uh, theistic God, would maybe be that there's uh, the God of Genesis chapter 6. Um, you remember that's a, a deity who's basically abandoned us, who ne neither seeks nor deserves our love. Remember God of Genesis chapter 6 um, repents having ever made a people who he says are evil in every inclination, and he says that he's going to blot them out of the face of the earth. Well, the God of Genesis chapter 6 makes a lot more sense of the silence of God in the, in the face of, of suffering and the hiddenness of God and much of the other arguments for atheism I've pointed out. So if you're intent on believing that someone is up there, I'm afraid that you can do no better than him. But note in conclusion, I think some of the, the intellectual and moral costs of clinging to theism in the face of the evidence in the way that Craig has. First, there's a non-physical person who transcends space and time, but who can cause events in space and time, and who explains the existence of everything there is. Uh, billions of ordinary people um, 
are basically uh, not being reached uh, by God, and God has no intention of reaching them because he knows that they would not be persuaded to enter into a relationship with him. If you believe in hell, as many people do, then all these billions of people are damned in advance. Um, and finally, that God's plan for creation includes September 11th, Chernobyl, Stalin's and Marl's purges, genocide in Armenia, and so on. Uh, that's just not the kind of God that I think we can reasonably believe in. Thank you very much for your attention.